Now this is perfect because we're in here speaking. And so let me get your name right in the teeth. Yeah. Okay. You're about to put you on the spot, man. Yeah, I ain't tripping. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, right now is a special moment because one, I'm in the home of Marie. Shout out for Marie in the background for inviting us here. Okay. Behind the camera, we got my beautiful fiance, McLee Sake. And today, we are with Latif. I said that right, my brother? Yeah. <laughs> We've been in the kitchen talking, and he's been pouring so much wisdom about loyalty. Um, he's been pouring in so much wisdom about like relationships and how he's even ended certain relationships because of one, one imperfection. Looking for flaws so that he can find a way to dip out all right, and this man is a man of God that has been looking to continuously do things the right way. Um, he's different. I mean, been made fun of, called certain names because he's following God's path, and he's poured so much wisdom. I just want to ask you today, as you speak to my leaders here, all right, in your life up until this point, I know you coach a lot of people. And you're helping people break through, you said suicide, addiction, right? Abuse, trauma. Yeah. What do you wish you would have known, right, back then that you know now? No. <laughs> um, I wish I would have known that I was able to, uh, get outside of myself and realize that my struggle can help somebody else and bring them through whatever they're going through. Um, my struggle was actually a gift and I didn't know it. And now I understand that and I'm able to package that gift and give it to somebody else. What was one of your greatest struggles that you would say? One of my greatest struggles still today is social anxiety social anxiety but when you know we talked about passion yeah and when I hear passion I tell you I hear love too so if I'm truly passionate about something and I love something then that mean I'll go the extra mile go that next step to do what I need to do to help the other person so that's what I do on a daily basis is try to be passionate I be passionate and I love on people because that's what I wanted when I was going through my struggle. Mm. Yeah. Who gave you that love? When did you receive it? I received it when I surrendered. And I realized the difference between religion and spirit. Yeah. When I got into the spiritual then, that's when all the stuff started, started changing for me. Because I started listening, being able to see, and understand what I see, and follow directions. Right now, you're helping individuals grow. What are you seeing now that your story and your expertise is doing for these people? How's God been using you? So, I deal with kids that uh, self harm. I deal with kids that uh, suicide ideations. But some that don't like to eat or eat too much. They call it eating disorders addiction, all drugs and alcohol. Um, the one common denominator that's helping all of them is listening. Just listening to them and not judging them and allowing them to be where they at at that specific time. Just like we was talking about the feelings. Yeah. Let, allow them to go through their feelings. Without interrupting or trying to fix it, trying to say you need to do this, you need to do that. Just allowing them to figure it out and letting them see that, okay, it's just temporary. And that's it. Can that be hard? Because what, I know a few individuals who have kids, yeah. right? And as parents, you know, especially as believers, right? We know that we're gonna go through trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. What happens when you have a child who is going through the trials and tribulations and you don't want to see them go through it, how do you cope with allowing them to grow 
in themselves? Like, how do you allow them to experience that and go through it? First of all, if you understand, if you spiritually fit, then you understand that the process got to be taking place regardless of whatever you do. The same process that, that's supposed to be supposed to happen gonna happen. And you may be taken away from that process if you get in the way. Mm -hmm. So you have to be spiritually fit first to understand that you're not running nothing in yeah. the first place. Yeah. And I also coach parents too. So that's part of the uh, process because addiction and all that other stuff tears the household down. Yeah. So that means it's a family disease. Mm -hmm. So that means you have to fix both sides. You have to help both sides and you have to give both sides the same opportunity. Yeah. To, to free themselves the way that they can, not the way that I want them to. Mm. Yeah. Give me an example of that. Um, addiction. You got new families, families that are new to addiction. Some people can like, let's say, drink a, a glass of wine, yeah. a half a glass and set it down, versus their child can't drink a half a glass. If they drink a half a glass, then they go on a four or five day binge. Yeah. Um, not pouring, the, the, the parent not saying, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, you need to do that. That's what I get all the time. I give them some some nuggets to uh, surrender. We have like a, a program, a 12 step program, and the 12 step program is, is, is based on Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous, but it's also one for Alanon for the parents. And I give them, I change the words, and um, they get to see where their behavior is not helping, it's actually hurting, you know? And also too much help can turn into enabling. Mm. And the enabling turns into the business. And uh, let's say I'm giving you uh, lunch money every day, yeah. but you know that I'm going to spend this lunch money on something that I don't have no business spending it on. Yeah. But just in case that one day I think in my mind, well, just in case they really just do want to get some some food, I gotta just keep giving them this money. So we teach them how how not to do that. How to to allow the kid to go through whatever they need to go through, and see that they can do it. Yeah. Small wins build big wins, and that's what we try to give a parent and a child. As we close, what would you challenge? All right, my leader's watching this right now. What would you challenge them to do moving forward to practice when it comes to helping other people? Try not, don't try to change them. Allow them to go through their process, not yours. And remember what it felt like when you was in your process when somebody was trying to control you. Who are you? What's your name, man? My name is Latif Glivens. I'm a recovery support peer specialist and a personal trainer and uh, serving with God.